Today, I'm talking to Geraldine Kroll. It's Tuesday, April 25th at the Brewster Ladies Library. Also in the room is our videographer, Jim Mills, and um, Diane Jones, who's also a member of the Oral History Project here, uh, which is a joint venture between the Brewster Historical Society and the Brewster Ladies Library. So welcome, Mrs. Kroll. Thank you for spending time with us today. Um, First, we'll start with, how old are you? What? Repeat. How old are you? I'm a young 93. Okay, very it's okay, good. You know, but what I'm doing, instead of having a birthday, like next one, I won't be 94, I'm going to be 92, because I'm going backwards. <laughs> well, that's a good system. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, where did you grow up? I grew up in Somerville, Massachusetts. Okay. And you went to school. Tell me about your, your school. Well, I went to St. Teresa's School mm -hmm. up until the third grade. And unfortunately, at that time, um, I went swimming in a polluted pool but didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I came down with what they call osteomyelitis, which is an infection of, of, the, leg, of the leg. And at that time, they didn't have penicillin for the general public. Mm -hmm. So from the third grade to the ninth grade, I was tutored at home by a, t t a teacher that was hired by the town. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, she was more interested in her salary than she was in teaching me. Oh my goodness. So I went into the ninth grade, it had high, into high school, and from that time, I went did everything I could possibly do, anything I was taught, mm -hmm. I learned. But there was a lot I wasn't taught. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but in high school, I made good grades, so I could get into college. Okay. And that's when I went to Framingham State Teachers College. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when I majored in foods, nutrition, and general home economics. Okay, and why did you choose that field of study? Probably because I was at that time because I was bedridden all those years. I was very good at my hand and in creating and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I took the course at uh, Somerville High School, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's why I went into Framingham. Okay. Uh, that's what I went into the Home Economics course. Okay. And what year did you graduate from Framingham? Oh, 1947. Okay. Yeah. So in the middle of the war. Right. The, the World War II had just ended? Uh, yes, and it was one of the reasons I went to college, because it was during the war, mm -hmm. and uh, I, uh, how can I remember that? Um, I knew because I had a disability mm -hmm. that I, um, I be, wouldn't be good in the workplace, and so I was into college. Uh, when I was 16, I had an operation on my leg. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was pretty well bent up, mm -hmm. and I really had a bad limp. But from then on, when I was 16, I did have an operation that straightened up the leg, mm -hmm. and uh, then I, I felt really normal. But I still have a limp, mm -hmm. guess, which doesn't bother me in the least. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. And how did you end up on Cape Cod? Well, the first year, I well, we did summer at Cape Cod. And then the first year I taught in Salem, Mass. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was quite an experience. Uh, I, when I think of it, I had a principal who would come in and get me so I was, my back was towards my students. And because of courtesy, I had to talk to her, because she mm -hmm. was talking to me. And then she'd say, do you know what your students are doing? Well, I couldn't very well. My back was towards them. <laughs> but anyhow, um, I've always wanted to teach on the, on the Cape. Uh -huh. So I applied for all the jobs on, from Plymouth right up to Provincetown. Yeah. And there was an opening in Orleans High. And that was for a dietitian and for the home economics teacher. Okay. And so the first... So you taught in the building that is now the middle school? Is that your first Yeah, that place? was it. And I was also the dietitian for the elementary elementary school as well. So I had to plan the menus for the East Ham, the Orleans, oh and the high school. Oh my goodness. I didn't know that about you. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, the lot you don't know about me. <laughs> Where did you live in Orleans? I lived on which is Main Street. There's an antique supposed to say right now, uh, so it's so hard to explain. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
I've only lived there about two years. Okay. And it was, it, I could walk to school, which yeah. was fine. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have a car at that time. Mm -hmm. Did you drive? Did you know how I, to drive? I don't want to know how to drive. Okay. Even people say to me, Cherry, do you drive? Yes, I can drive. I just can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, uh, what was, why did you move to Brewster? Because I married a Brewster boy. Okay. So let's talk about Mr. Kroll. How did you meet? Mr. Kroll? Mm hmm Well. Robert Kroll. I was a dietitian, and of course it was my, my second chair, and all these, all these salesmen were coming in, you know, can we have the order for the milk? Can we have the order for the ice cream? Can we have the order for the meat? Can we have the order? I was so confused. I wasn't confused. I was like, oh, I don't know. But there was one, two people, two men, came in and they said that uh, they had the order of the milk, milk butter. And I, so I, I didn't know which one. So I went up to the principal, the superintendent, and I called up and I said, who has the milk butter? Both these people say they have it. He said, that's your responsibility. You just take, you decide yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought there was one that was real cute. <laughs> but I couldn't remember what company he said he was with. So I went into the kitchen and uh, I, they said, oh, we haven't seen Bobby for a long, long time. So I started to think, oh gosh, yes. Uh, if he hadn't seen Bobby for a long time, he didn't have the milk order last year. So I said, who had the milk order last year? And they told me, I think we should change. <laughs> The poor boy, he was sunk right there and then. <laughs> and then we get married and moved to Brewster in the old family home, which was built in 1734. I'm no longer in that home, but uh, it, it's a nice old place. And a young couple have it, and they do a lot of nice work on it. And uh, so that's how I get to Brewster. Okay. Um, so the house, actually, I remember as a girl, it was an interesting house because it was so old. Uh -huh. Can, are there features in it that you could talk about that you think are interesting? Well, we had what they call the Dutch oven. Mm -hmm. you know, you'd open up the door and the oven was made all these cut curved brooks. And uh, at one time, Bob's ancestors boarded it up. So it was fun to unboard it and to take all the, uh, they had some uh, equipment that, that was in it. Yeah. Um, it was a nice old house. It was quite close to the road, and me being from the city, it was kind of, you know. And then when I saw a mouse, I think I just went out of my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so we finally uh, sold the house, but not the land. Mm -hmm. My children have the land that's across the street, and my son particularly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we moved across the street, which my son, my, uh, my husband had more land over there, mm -hmm. and that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, if I had my brothers, I wouldn't go back. They had a very comfortable house, but you know, there were rats. And I was afraid of rats, you know. So right now we have a house that has no, no, no farm and animals. So you moved to Brewster, and you're a newlywed, and you also changed schools? You, you, how did it come? How uh, did you come to teach well, in Brewster? Well, yeah, when you get married, I get pregnant, and then uh, I uh, resigned from Orleans. And then and this was a coincidence. Uh, I had three children, and uh, Mr. Dickey, who was on the school committee at that time, was going by my house, and he had a new car, mm -hmm. and the car broke down. <laughs> and he said, "So he said, can I use your telephone?" And he said, "I said, okay." So uh, I said, isn't there any vacancy in the Brewster School? And he said, yes, why don't you apply? So the vacancy was two afternoons a week, three hours. And that was a total of six hours. And that was perfect, you know. And then I had a woman, Mrs. Walters, and she said, I'll be you sit. The children probably oh my goodness. Them. And so it was the three hours, and that was beautiful. You mm -hmm. know, I really loved the kids. They were, they were, they were funny. And on the other side of my room was Mr. Crockley. And Mr. Crockley taught woodworking, and I got to tell you a funny story. Um, his room was here, and my room was here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it was Easter time, and I wanted to show the children how to make Easter eggs, the kind that you look in the, into the in Easter egg. Did I teach you? Yes. Yeah, and <laughs> you see a little scene. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a two-day effect. So I had the Easter eggs, and the children all made them. And they put them out. 
to drag for the next lesson when they were nice and dry and they could put the scene in it. Well, the boys, oh, they were just tempted so much. They got out from Mr. Crappy's room, came into my room, bang, 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 oh. bang. Every, every <laughs> Easter egg was smashed. Of course, I was furious. And uh, we had to just do the egg, the lesson all over again. Yeah. But uh, that was a fun lesson. It was. So let's, um, just so we're, we can have people understand, you were at the building that's um, now the town offices, right? So okay. the, the school was at the town hall, the current town hall. That yes. was where you started working in Brewster. Yes, yes. So that address is 2198 Main Street is where the... the no, I don't remember that. I, I looked it up. Oh, you looked it up, okay. <laughs> and the home, ec or your classroom, was in the basement. It was in the basement. And um, my recollection is there were sewing machines and a little kitchen. Yes, we had a sewing machine for about two girls and for one sewing machine. Right. And then we had one stove, I think it was with 12 girls. And we had to either plan my lesson, so some of the girls were using the stove and some of the girls were some, doing something else. Right. And uh, when I think of it, uh, after it bring back fond memories to me, and uh, it, was, it was a fun thing. Yeah. And I always liked to have fun things. I mm -hmm. never thought of it as work. Yeah, this was it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, anything else about that room? Uh, no. We can. We'll talk more about some other things in a minute. What year did you start teaching in Brewster? I would think it was. Let me see. About 1955. Okay. And I think that was the time. I think it was right after my son was born. Right. And so it was around that time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And. My remembrance was that it was only girls had oh. home ec oh, yes. and only boys had shop. That's right. And did anyone ever try to uh, change that? Not at that time. No, it didn't, that didn't happen until I was in Orleans. But we're not talking about Orleans no. anymore. So, uh, no. The, okay. Plus the boys when we were doing cooking and so forth, they kind of poked their nose in the, in the door, hoping they'd give out samples. But those kids, oh, that was, they were not giving out their cookies. <laughs> so I brought along, and we can show this. Can you see it? This is the textbook for eighth grade. Well, there was sixth, seventh, and eighth, right? Um, yes, wasn't it, Brewster? Yes. So I, I don't believe in sixth grade. Did the sixth se seventh and eighth like that? I learned how to sew. You probably remember better than I do, Faith. Okay. Um, I it, it's my memory that at least when I was in seventh grade, uh -huh. I was had you as a teacher and possibly in the sixth grade. Definitely in the eighth grade. I can remember. I know at one time uh, we had a fashion show. Do you I, it? I do remember, so I was going to ask you about that. Okay, but then I'll wait for you. So to what are your memories of, of the fashion show? Oh, that was a great, that was, Mrs. Dunn was the English teacher, mm -hmm. and she, she tried to bring her classes into what I was doing, mm -hmm. so she had each student write a commentary on their dresses. And I don't know how she ever did it, because most of the dresses were blue. And she had to say something different about each dress. Yes. And then David Crocker, remember him? Yes. He, he very much a gentleman, he always is and still is. And he escorted each girl down the steps as, as Mrs. is one of the, who was the commentator, do you remember? I don't remember the commentator. I specifically remember this event because I wore the skirt I had made, which was navy blue with flowers. <laughs> and I remember Linda Acorn had a lovely dress on and she carried a stuffed animal that she had sewed. Oh, who was that? Linda Acorn. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Um, but she and was, she was quite talented. She was a very, she was the most talented seamstress. Uh -huh in our class 
is my recollection. I can say, do I hear a funny story? Sure. Uh, my little roots day. <laughs> it could be one girl or I had to fit the dresses on the children, you know, that was be before the skirt, it was after the skirts. Mm -hmm. And so this one girl, uh, at her time came for me to fit her. And she burst into tears and ran out of the room. And so, so I said to another girl, uh, would you go find out what's, what's wrong with her? Why is she crying? You know, I, mean, I hadn't done anything. We had a good relationship. And the girl came back and she says, Mrs. Cole, she didn't want you to fit it because last time you fit it, she was flat chested and now she's wearing falsies and she didn't want you to know it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you don't know who that is. I won't say who it is. Don't say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go look it up now. I'll uh, her on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just funny, you know, and, uh, and then we had. The kids were good. They were really good. And yeah. sometimes they'd say, one child would say, I don't want to sit next to her. And I'd say, well, maybe she doesn't want to sit next to you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was a good, good group. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you taught me how to sew. Okay. You taught sewing. Yes. Half the year was sewing and half was cooking. Yes. Now, we didn't call it sewing. We call it clothing construction. Oh, I didn't know And that. the foods we call nutrition. Oh. Oh, thank you for straightening me out. <laughs> and I remember the treadle sewing machine. That's yeah. That's what oh. we learned on. Oh, yes. Yeah. That was fun. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. Yeah. And do you remember the paper that we had to sew? Oh, of course. That's a full. <laughs> So this was a circle, and you had to go around the circle and guide the needle. And then the hard one was when you had a square, and you had to put the needle right in the squares. And then you have the next one. So I thought the square was a lot easier than the circle. <laughs> the circle was hard. So you would be like driving <laughs> your paper. And I remember that one of the other students got me laughing. Oh. Got me laughing, oh. <laughs> and my circle was not very good. And you said something to me, and I said, "Well, it's her fault for making me laugh." And you said you were in charge of the machine. <laughs> uh, it was, you know, it was a fun, it was a fun time. It was a kid, and I, I enjoyed it immensely, and uh, it was good. Yeah. And uh, it, it bothered me if one girl was not very nice to the other. Yeah, but, but that didn't happen very often. Usually there was some boy involved or about it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Do you, one of my other memories is the bread baking day. Okay. When we baked bread. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, that's been a long time ago. And I, when I went to Orleans, the kids were still making bread. And you know what? It's the best recipe going. Is it in here? No. <laughs> if you want it, you have to be nice to me. <laughs> I'll tell you how I got that Aunt Maud's bread. Uh-huh. Um, when I first came to Brewster, it was the older people who had to give me the up and down, make sure that I was okay for Brewster. <laughs> so this woman invited me to uh, her home, and uh, of course I got all dressed up and so forth. And she served me some bread. It was delicious. So I asked if I could have the, the recipe, and she said yes. And it was her housekeeper's bread. Mm -hmm. And she said it was her housekeeper's bread. And it was real, real old. And it was called Aunt Maud's Bread. Hmm. She lived beside the, the general store. Hmm. Where the Allens lived? Huh? Near, do you remember the Allens? She was, it was, yes, yeah, she was an Allen. Okay. And one of the older Allens. Okay. And so, uh, anyhow, the recipe was so simple and so nice that I've been using it ever since. Um, and a, thank you, because I, I was very proud of myself at age 13 for baking bread, oh, and I really? thought it was very <laughs> brave of you as the teacher to have all of the girls. And I remember running up and down the stairs when it was time to knead the <laughs> bread. And it was a very busy day at Brewster Elementary School. So, um, and you came out of it with this beautiful loaf of bread. It is. It's a wonderful recipe. Hmm. It should go down in the, 
in history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some of the other teachers that were there while you were teaching, could, do you remember who you were? Oh, yes, there was Mrs. Dunn, no, no, Mrs. Dunn, of course. Yep. And then there was Mrs. Daly. Yes, fifth grade. And then Mr. Ferreira was the principal, mm -hmm. and so was it Mrs. Mr. Maxwell. Yes. And um, Mr. Ferreira was funny. He, well, he would come in now and then, and he'd have the girls kneel down to see if the dress touched the ground. Because they all had to be at a certain height. <laughs> <laughs> and his first name was John, correct? Thanks. John was What was his first name? Oh. Mr. Ferreira. John Ferreira. John, okay. Yeah. And he was the principal. And of course, Mr. Burris was the principal. That's Ozzy Burris. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Mr. Maxwell, I remember. Mr. Mr. Maxwell. And I don't remember his first name. And there's another Mr. Fletcher. Who I don't remember. Um, he used to live across, right next um, to the filling station. That was after your time. Okay. Um, and uh, so then I, when there was an opening in Orleans, uh, by that time, my children were getting to be to college age, mm -hmm. and uh, so I uh, applied for that job. And because I had taught in Orleans before, mm -hmm. they had all the references, and uh, so uh, they hired me. Thank God, yeah, which was uh, that was that was a nice that was a nice school. Yeah. So with Mrs. Laporte. Yeah, uh, Mrs. Laporte was in, well, you, when you were in Brewster. Mr. Laporte, Mrs. Laporte. Mrs. Laporte was yes. fourth grade. Mr. Laporte taught music. Yes, yes. And do you remember who taught in first, second, or third? And Mrs. Lindsay. Okay. And I don't know what, I think she was a young, young grade, but I don't Mrs. Lindsay, Mrs. Mrs. Daly, um, uh, and Mrs. Laporte. Mm -hmm. um, then there was another one, didn't stay very long. Mm. I don't remember quite who that was. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she wasn't a Brewster person. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were a nice person. We had a nice faculty there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they all got along together, and the yep. kids, you know, the kids, I love them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Any students that particularly stand out or, or other stories that you remember about the kids that you want to share? Oh, one girl in particular, um, I won't name her, she was very, very smart, mm -hmm. beautiful girl, and uh, she had a scholarship to uh, Wellesley College. But the lifestyle of the, of the students at Wellesley College were a lot different than her lifestyle, mm -hmm. and after one year she she student couldn't take it, mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened to her now. Hmm. But she was okay. Well, like, of course, you know, Lawrence, uh, the Crocker boy. He has a very successful uh, uh, business. Right, and, David. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to say the word. Well, not Flores. Uh, nursery. Flower. Yeah, he has yeah. Crocker Nursery. And yep. uh, there are a lot of nice kids that graduated mm -hmm. there. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I can't pick them all out. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think of one, and I won't name them. This was a, a student that some of the teachers were down on, down on, down on. Now he's a successful businessman, and I want to say, hmm, I <laughs> wish you could see him now. Because <laughs> sometimes we judge people too fast. Mm -hmm. you know, and so, uh, mm -hmm. But since, since I won't tell you the name on that one, but that was... He was just a nice kid. Mm -hmm. right it bothered me when teachers go down on other kids. Mm -hmm. And they do. They do. They have done in the past. Mm -hmm. And they're the wrong, they're in the wrong all the time. <laughs> um, I remember at every eighth grade graduation, uh -huh. there were different awards. And uh -huh. do you remember? Uh, as my recollection is there was a home, a home economics award every year. I could. Yes. Because I think my sister got it. Did she? Probably. But then there was another one who lived on the Howard Road. I can't remember her name. Uh -huh. I think she lived with her grandparents. Mm -hmm. And um, 
she was as, as still as, as budded right out. Mm -hmm. At first she was very shy, but then all this was really great, mm -hmm. you know. Not even just her work, but her whole personality. Mm -hmm. And so I think she was the one that got one year, but I can't remember who it was. Yeah. You know, I work in a thrift shop, and they said, and there's so many people come in, and they'll look at me, and they'll say, don't know who I am. But the minute I open up my mouth, <gasps> Mrs. Crowell. <laughs> <laughs> so we, sometimes they forget a lot, too. And, and it's very, and most of the time, I can almost tell them what they did, you know, especially in the food demonstrations. That was a fun thing to do. Uh -huh. uh, and because the classes, um, they were very short, and so instead of teaching something, I would teach it one week, and then they'd come in, and they'd teach something for me, and so... Uh, and I remember doing that. You had our class do that. Yeah, yeah. And I remember baking something at home and having to make a list of every single item that I used because you wanted us to have it all laid that out. That did, yeah. And I did my whole demonstration, and I had forgotten to pull out a pan <laughs> for the brownies, because I, in my list making, like I just, I had everything, the spatula, the spoon, the <laughs> measuring. Right and then I was standing there looking at you like, oh. <laughs> but you gave me a good grade anyway. It was yeah. very nice. Of that you. was an organization. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember that. Uh, I have <laughs> uh, some of these are so funny. Uh, this one boy, he brought me a piece of apple pie, and he just, he made it. And he wanted me to have it, and I said, "Well, I'll put it down. You know, I'll have it for lunch." And then I remember his mother told me at home. Oftentimes, when he has the milk, he'll put it in his mouth and then spit it out again. I said, thank God I'm not eating that piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he just wanted to show me that he could do something, even though he wasn't in my class. Oh, that's so uh, That was a funny one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you went to Orleans Middle School next, Did you, is that correct? Right. A after Brewster. Yes. You left there what year? Do you have an idea? I would say I probably nineteen let me be fifty five. I made fifty fifty nine probably. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. So after after Brewster Elementary. Yes. Then you took a job in Orleans. Yes. At the middle school? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's the middle school then was was where the middle school is now? Yes. Okay. And did you then have boys and girls in? Yes. That was... That was the big definitely. change. But we're not talking about Orlando. We can talk we're about it a little bit. Yeah, we're just fine. talking about Brewster now. And, uh, and then did I mention... Because the Brewster kids went to the middle school. Right? The Brewster children went to the middle yes, school. Yes, yes. That was it. Now, uh, I might have told you... The uh, one thing maybe you remember, um, in front of Donald Donald's store, which is now the general store, they used to have a, a policeman's box, like they had a Bermuda, and Mr. McClatchy used to be the one to, to be directing traffic. They only had it a couple of years, and I was married in 1950, so I think they did away with it in like 1952, and that was a fun thing. So it was right in the intersection, right in the middle of the right intersection. Right in the intersection, huh. um, more or less in front of the general store. Mm -hmm. And then we had where the ice cream store is now was the post office. Right. And uh, and that was the post office you would use. Yes. Oh yeah. And they knew it was Mrs. Blue, and she used to um, be behind the the counter. At that time, my children were. Saving, buying saving stamps. And she had to go in and buy the saving stamps. And she was not too happy. She thought that they were taking the her time. Oh. So then they stopped buying saving stamps. <laughs> I mean, we had a lot of characters in Brewster. Every one of them, I guess. Okay, well, let's talk about some of those those folks. About what? Some of the people that you that you remember as characters. Oh, Mrs. Blue was one of them. 
Okay. <laughs> she didn't know whether she was in a good mood or not. And of course, everybody knew about Donald Dome. Right. Yeah. He, uh, he was he was a very kind person. And I had two children, well, two girls. And uh, if you wanted a job during his store, mm -hmm. you didn't ask. He asked you. Mm -hmm. So my daughter, Margie, uh, I think she said she'd like to work there. No. He asked Kathleen, my older daughter, because and then he would stand in back of the, he had a counter, yeah. and then there was a, a curtain, and he'd stand in back of the curtain. So somebody would come in, like Mrs. Bloom, and he'd get behind the curtain, and the woman would say, is Donald here? And the father would say, uh, not that I know of. <laughs> He's right behind the curtain. Oh, so when he had certain customers, get him go behind the curtain. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And he was he was a nice man. He yeah. really was. So, and uh, talking about sewing, his mother was a seamstress, and I showed her something that I made, and she said, "Oh, that is beautiful." Of course, I did well, did good, good work at that time, coming coming from the college and getting right. all those instructions. Right. Um, but so when he had Donald was a character, and, and his and mother's and name was Beulah. Huh? His mother's mother name was Beulah. Uh huh. Yeah. And then. She was no much taller than I, no short, I think she was shorter than I am uh -huh. right now. Incidentally, I'm shrinking. <laughs> and uh, I think Karen, oh, the goat lady. I was going to ask you about her. Oh, the goat lady. So tell tell us about the goat lady, because my memory is, is faint. Well, she lived uh, on Tubman Road, kind of near the end, uh, when I say the end, by the Route 6A. And she had a beautiful complexion. She really did. And she would have these clothes on in winter. And in the summer, she'd have a winter coat on. And uh, she used to have goats. And she'd go from Tubman Road the back way and ended up at the dump. I don't know how she did that, but she did. Yeah. And she would feed the goats. <laughs> but you're the second person we've interviewed who remembers the goat lady. Or yeah. who talked about her. Oh, yeah, and she used to walk all the time. Yeah. Of course, they didn't have any transportation. Right. And Mr. Oh, did you hear the story about the goat lady? The, goat, the husband, he died. Yeah. You haven't heard this one? No. He died. She's stiff as a boy. She didn't call anybody. She just took the body, whoop, took him off the porch, put him down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did she have a name? Like, do, do you know what her name was? Oh, I don't know. It was just the goat lady and the goat man. <laughs> and here he was, he was stiff. <laughs> <laughs> now, this probably is hearsay because I did not see him. No. Well, it's a good story. Yeah, it is a good story. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What about people like Percy Newcomb or Phoebe Foster? I didn't know Percy knew him. I mean, okay. he, knew, he knew me, he mm -hmm. knew my husband, he knew the whole story of the whole Crow family. Yeah. And uh, Bobby Foster, he was a nice, nice gentleman. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand he didn't sleep at all. He had a problem sleeping, and he'd sit up in his chair and sleep all night. It was really a medical problem. Mm -hmm. He was a very kind person. Mm -hmm. He was nice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so um, he wasn't, he was not really a character. He was just, just, just nice. Yeah. And then, of course, we had the uh, drummer boy, the people, the man who sat in that up. He was a lovely Mr. McGowan, I think. The McGowan family, yeah. yes. And he, they were they were very. We did, had a lot of nice people. Yeah. Day. Did Kathleen work at the? Did Kathleen, your daughter, work at the drummer boy? I don't remember. Really. Okay. Yeah. You know, she worked with Donald Dolan, and he 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 had a very good relationship with mm -hmm. her, and uh, she was. In her eyes, she 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 was a Cape Codder, mm -hmm. and he and his father's name. And I imagine this: his father's name was Patrick Murphy, a real Irishman. Mm -hmm. Kathleen's grandfather's name was Patrick Murphy. Did no, he? No, no ties. No <laughs> ties. Um, anything else I can tell you about? No, that's fine. Um, can we talk more about Mr. Kroll's family and? Um, you said he worked for one of the local dairies? He did. He worked for Whitey's Milk. Okay. 
Um, Bob was a very nice, kind person, and he would do things. Um, one day he said to me, "Come on, come on." I didn't know where I was going. Mm -hmm. He just wanted me to see the flowers that are in bloom. We had a black farm, and they were in bloom at a certain time, yeah. and that's what he wanted me to see. Huh. Um, he was a very kind person, and little things um, caught his eye. Mm -hmm. He was a regular Cape Cod, sometimes caught it. He didn't say much, but he saw an awful lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we had uh, a policeman in town that my older daughter was hanging around with a group that was not the best. Mm -hmm. And he just took my husband aside and he said, do you realize who your daughter is hanging around with? He said, I wouldn't have I hmm. And I thought, that's wonderful. That he would think so much of children that he would speak to their parents. Mm -hmm. And of course, my husband spoke to my daughter, which was Kathleen, and that, uh, that relationship was stopped mm -hmm. right there and then. Mm -hmm. um, the Crow's man, Bob's father, was a builder. And I have to tell you a nice story. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Framingham and we had uh, a very lovely uh, president and he had a summer home in uh, Bruce, in uh, Brewster, Brewster Park and one day he told the story how people were not materialized about everything and he had a builder and he called up the builder and he said to him, which Mr. Co was Mr. Kroll, he said I want an addition on my house mm -hmm. and so the man said oh I'm sorry I can't see you today because uh, I have other things to do. So the, the, the uh, president said, well, okay. So he said to his wife, let's go for a walk, a ride. So they went riding, and there in a field was the man and his son picking Mayflowers. And this was a very important thing that he had to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, he said to his, he stopped and he talked to the, the builder. And uh, so the builder said to his son, Come on, son, go get some Mayflowers and give them to Mrs. O'Connor, who was the president. And he did, and uh, they made another appointment to make for the alterations in his house. Mm -hmm. So then, years later, I'm in church, and I came out, and there was the president. And of course, he knew me, so he said, hi, how are you? And he said, do you remember the story about the Mayflowers? And I said, yes, I remember it, thank God. And um, he said, well, you know something, you just married that little boy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I thought that was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, my husband was very much um, into things that were very, not important to you, but important to other people. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So uh, I thought, well, um, so Mr. O'Connor did remember. Yep. And he was, a, he was a handsome man. Yep. Uh, so in the Crow the family, they had a lot of problems. How was down by Brewster Park, and eventually when the mother died, he sold those out. Uh -huh. And then I lived in the old family, uh, old family home. The homestead, home that's the house on Tubman Road that's that we house. talked about. Okay. But I wasn't too happy with the rats, you know. They, yeah. <laughs> I really wasn't. No one likes rats. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the bank. Yeah. yeah. And so we sold that, and then we had land across the street, and that's yeah. where we are right now. Yeah. And you lived near the wild animal farm for many years. Oh yes, that was not too pleasant. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not too pleasant because the boy wanted a piece of land and we sold it to him because he wanted to build a house, but the house never went up, the animal farm did. Oh, I didn't know so that. So he was deceitful, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So now they're putting it out, uh, 14 houses for the, uh, uh, well I wouldn't say what they bought because they have to put a lot of equity into the building. Yeah, it's, it's affordable. It's affordable housing. Yes, and it looks down. It looks pretty good down there. Yes, you know? I agree. And uh, and Brewster is building up. I mean, no matter what. Yep. And I think, it's, from what I can see, uh, <laughs> I have to tell you. I hope you edit some of the stories. <laughs> you know, working at the year, my, my my son lives next to this development because we had six acres and then we sold some. Yep. So my son has like three three house lots. Mm -hmm. And so his wife was out walking one day and she saw somebody was using the property, her property, for a toilet. Oh dear. So she got on the phone, called him up and said, look, you know, this is what's happening. I want that, she has a southern accent, I want that move removed. <laughs> They removed it within 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, um, oh my goodness. There are enough trees. Um, I sent planted a lot of trees on the, on the borderline, so they will have a lot of privacy. I mean, if you live in a place that you have all this land around you and all of a sudden people around you, it, it's different. Right, right, but right. I mean, you can find a lot of humor. <laughs> well, did you have, um, the animals used to get free occasionally, didn't they? Oh, yes, yes. And uh, with great pleasure, we would call up the animals, man, at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, you know, you're missing animals. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and we had, we have a lot of traffic on Tumblr Road right now. Yeah. And it used to be that we had a friend, the Silvers had a dog who came to visit, and they, he said, sleep in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. A cow would go by, he'd get up, the cow would pass, he'd go back to the middle of the mm -hmm. road. They might be six cows a day, mm -hmm. and now they could be many, many more than that. Mm -hmm. um, is that one of the big changes that you've noticed since? Oh, the traffic. I mean, yeah. I my son lives across the street. Mm -hmm. I cannot go to his house. I cannot walk over there. The traffic is so bad. My oh son my said no. You know. So if I want to visit my son, which is just across, I get in my car <laughs> and walk and drive over there. Yeah. But now we have a little difficulty here. Yes, I. I yes. Mm. So uh, he can come visit you. Uh, he can visit your house. Oh yes, yes. I have a, a son who uh, visits me every morning and brings yep. me the newspaper. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want me to walk down the driveway and go across the street and get my newspaper. So he brings it. That's nice. Uh, he's, he's That's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I know you've been very involved in your whole life is the Catholic Church. Yes. Can you, do you remember when Our Lady of the Cape was built? Oh yes, I remember that. Um, before that, you had to remember whether this is odd or even Sunday. It was an even Sunday you went to church in Orleans. It was an odd Sunday you went to church in Brewster. You didn't know that. I don't remember. So the, Of course not, you wouldn't remember. Which church in Brewster? The Immaculate Conception yes. Church? Yes. Okay. And then we'd go to Orleans. Okay. And so you had to remember which is which. You know, so... Uh, I, it was the very few Catholics at that time. I do remember that. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, and then of course they get more and more and more, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. It's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, and your children went to St. Joan of Arc school. They went to St. Joan of Arc. Which Sometimes I wonder whether that was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because I was, in my own religion, I thought they should, because that's what I should, that's what a good Catholic would do. But I realized what I did, I was isolating the children from the people in, in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't the uh, uh, people her age, she didn't have any contact, when I'm trying to say, no, Catholic, didn't have the contact mm -hmm. with. And then uh, Margie left the, the school and then went back to, uh, went, to say, went to Brewster and then went back to St. Joan of Arc. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a very good foundation, mm -hmm. very good re religious training. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, do you remember Father Nolan? Oh yes, I remember him. Uh huh. And he came to town and built the Catholic Church on Stony Brook Road. Oh, well, that was a big thing. Oh, that was. And of course, now there's so many additions to it and so forth. Yeah. It has changed a lot. Yeah. Um, years ago, they, you said Jerry Crow never knew who Jerry Crow was. Now they would say, who? <laughs> <laughs> it is different. Yeah. I, I work in a thrift shop because I enjoy it immensely. Yeah. And uh, and there's other um, religions that are working right alongside it because they enjoy it too. It's, uh, oh, you mean the volunteers? Yes, the, the volunteers. volunteers there volunteers. are just all yeah, yeah. all different. It's not exclusively Catholic ladies. It's, oh no 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 yeah. no no no! We have our volunteers and then. Um, uh, it, it, it's very nice, and the people coming in are really lovely. Um, you know, years ago there was a stigma about uh, second hands place, mm -hmm. thrift shop. Not mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't have one. This happens to be a, a cast off for my daughter. <laughs> oh yeah, this came from. You know what I do? I lie. This came from. Um, I I think. I think it came from flames. See, I didn't say it did. I just said I think. <laughs> <laughs>
I do that too. <laughs> I say what the label is, I don't say where I got it. No, that's it, you know, so um, And it's the thrill of the hunt. Uh, there's so many, so many, so many nice things about it. And yeah. People are people. Mm -hmm. You don't say, um, uh, I don't like this one because of that, I don't like this one. Everybody's the same. Mm -hmm. We're all basically the same. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, uh, Anything else? Um, you had said that you were thinking of some other stories that you wanted to share. Did you, we have we talked about? What was that? I, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to surprise me. No, I, I just wanted to tell you that I, I felt so good when your grandmother was the librarian in the Naked Number Three card. That was like a go and say, oh, Number Three, you know, um, <laughs> and. Uh, so, yeah. so just to, to tell that story, um, my grandmother, Faith Ellis, was librarian here for 25 years. Yeah, she was a lovely lady. And um, we all had little, when you signed a book out, you signed your name and she wrote your number, right? Is that yeah. how it worked? Yeah. I no, it's a little cat from this big, yep. number three. And yep. I was so proud to have that number three. You say your grandmother had number one, we don't know who has number two. <laughs> and of course now, um, I've gone to the library so much, I'll just say, oh, I forgot my card. They know who I am. Sure, sure. Um, I used to go a lot more than what I'm going right now because uh, I have this problem with balance, so I have to wait for one of my children to mm -hmm. take me. And which they do. Mm -hmm. And it's either a Friday night, a Thursday night, or a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the other stories I was thinking about. And I wanted to tell you about them. The police went in their box. And, um, uh, you know, at my age. You have a lot to you right remember a lot. You <laughs> remember a lot. <laughs> my memory is fleeting me right now. Uh, I don't know. I think Brewster's a wonderful town. Mm -hmm. And of uh, course, I often go now, or have been, going down to the drummer boy. Mm -hmm. and I know there's a situation with the dogs, mm -hmm. and I know it's scary, mm -hmm. and I have been there when it's been scary. Um, but you know, it was nice and friendly. Now I don't go there because I know if I fall, there's no one around. Right. And there were dogs there, you know, uh, there was someone there to pick you up if you should fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they could be more disciplined. Uh, you know, you have someone come rush at you and the, the mother owner saying, Oh, Vito, Vito! And she's not doing anything about it, the dogs are all like <laughs> But I have a dog and I love him. So, so I, I only wish that they went back to the park. They could have a fenced in area. But talking about that, my granddaughter's going to get married at the gazebo. Oh, she is? Yes. Uh, I did not know that. Well, you got to catch up on your... I know, I haven't. I have to catch up on the Kroll yeah. family news. Yeah. And, um, I don't know what else is going on. Um, uh, well, let me question? run through, let me look at my list of questions. Oh, you've got more? I'm going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we've talked about a lot of this, like the town officials that you remember. The what? Town officials. Oh, yes. The, I remember when they used to have the town meeting and talk of the roosters. Um, where was it? The town hall. Talk of the town hall. The old town hall. Way up, way mm -hmm. up. And, uh, How many people would come? Oh, quite a few. They filled it. They filled all the benches there. Yeah. And, uh, and that was nice. Uh, and then they moved it to the auditorium of the, the, the elementary school. Elementary school. Right. Before that, it was, you know, it was to me like, um, this is real town, this is really sw small town. Yeah. yeah, because you you were, town meeting was new to you when you came to oh, the Oh, yeah, I, lived, I mean, I lived, I lived in the city. Right, you know, was, right, uh, right. This was so different. Um, Everybody is so friendly, and, and even now they are, but uh, you knew everybody. Mm -hmm. And everyone was interconnected. Oh, yes. Yeah, was that right. hard to learn when you came to town? Right. How, when you first came to Brewster, did you 
enjoy learning how people were related to each other? Oh, yes. Yeah, they all knew that. Yeah, they all knew anything <laughs> about you. <children. laughs> and uh, the Crohn's didn't have many relatives, uh, really. Mm -hmm. um, they, so, um, I'm thinking as a teacher, you would have learned quickly who were cousins and who were siblings and oh yes yeah. yes oh yeah and you'd have to be aware of that <laughs> you better you know it I can I think Brewster is really a lonely town and where they see all this new construction going up and I think what else they have to do it it's a good place to live you know yeah and uh, um, Okay. I can't really think, you know, when I go home tonight, I don't think of a lot of things. Especially when I go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and wait. Uh, well, you probably know this. The girl who writes the books about Brewster. She talks Gunning. about Poverty Lane. Yes. And that is Tumblr Road. Probably you probably know, know that. Yeah. And I had a friend, and I had a map on my kitchen, and it said Poverty Lane. She said, where is Poverty Lane? I said, you're in it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I really love where she was called Poverty Lane. I know, it's a, it's a, it's a very old-fashioned name. It is, you know, and, uh, and, and then, you know, names like Punk Hong. Mm -hmm. Who is Punk Hong? <laughs> the, right, the Punk Horn, and, and right, uh, exactly. And then remember Harry, Harry Mutt? You remember him? Harry, yes. Now, it's my understanding that's what everyone called him, but no one called him that to his face. They didn't call him right? Ha they, his name was Harry Alexander. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And everyone referred to him as Harry Mudd. Oh, yeah. But you never called him that to his face, did you? Oh, no. But you just know it was Harry Mudd. He was always at the dump. He was a dump picker. Oh, he was a dump picker. He was a herring. Oh, a yes. herring warden, and he was very involved with the herring run. Uh huh. And I just was rereading the run by John Hay, and he quotes Harry Alexander a lot. Oh, really? In that book, it's interesting. Oh, we'll have to get that book. Yes, it's um, he's in there quite a bit. Yeah. He was That's quite a character. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, He's a nice old guy, though. Yes. He, he wasn't a mean person. No, and he was very colorful. Yes, yeah, he was a nice person. You know, we have a lot of nice people in Brewster. We yeah. really do. We don't think we have any bad people. That's like I think of Brewster. Did you know people in Brewster Park? Um, I'm only from the, um, when the president of the college that I went to lived in Brewster Park, and my husband's father, um, there's a lot of building in Brewster Park. Okay, okay so and that's that. And the Crows right. own cabins there, well, cottages, whatever you want to call them. But after Mrs. Crow died, there were four boys, and uh, so uh, they just got rid of the cottages. They probably regretted it later, but right now they. Uh, so the Crows owned a bit of the land that is now Brewster Park. No, they don't have any more. But they used to. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, that was it. So uh, they had to. No, see, the girls, they're all four boys. Yep. So uh, there are no girls in the family that yep. I know of. And then when I had my child, I had two girls, right, and one, two. Yeah. And, uh, so um, I'm trying to think of some of the things. Well, what were Bob's brothers' names? Your husband's brothers, what were their names? Harold. Uh huh. Arthur. Mm hmm. And Howard. And Howard. Okay. H, H, H. <laughs> and Bob was Robert. Robert was. And was he the oldest? The baby. He was the baby. He was the baby. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and they were all a good family. And, uh, and of course, Bob stayed in the old homestead, but he was happy to move, you know. To and, a new home. And the, as it is now, the house is. They widened Temple Road, so the house got closer and closer to the road. Yeah. And uh, there's a lovely couple in there now. They're yep. really, they're landscapers, and they're doing a nice job, and okay. hard working. So you have nice neighbors? Oh, yes, yeah, we have a lot of nice neighbors. Good. But you know what, we really don't, they're all nice, but this, well, like I fell, and one of the cars went by, and they saw me, and they wanted to pick me up, and so forth, but we don't have really neighbor neighbors, 
You know, they don't know what I'm doing every day. Right, people are keeping their distance. That's it, that's the word, yes. Hmm. yes. But they're nearby if you need them. Yes, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm asking to repeat that. They are nearby if you need them, but they keep yeah, their distance. Yeah, that's right, yeah. They're good, they're good people. Yeah, you know, nice. I say that, uh, and I think once you get to know a person, it's nice. But sometimes you don't, you're afraid. You're afraid to venture out, mm -hmm. you know, so. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, yeah, I sit on my porch, and uh, since I've had this problem with, with falling, I don't want to venture out too much myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank God it's not something else. I, I should, my husband's been dead for 25 years, 18 years. Yeah. I thought I, I would be following him. I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's my experiences, my experiences that teachers, many teachers live long lives. Really? Well, so thank you. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? We have no problems. I have no problems. You know, and I, I read, uh, listen to Judge Judy, and all those problems, uh, I say, thank God they're not mine. Exactly. <laughs> and I want to get into television and solve them, solve them the problems. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, that's about it, I think. I can't well, think of anything else, today. I thank you so much. For it's been a pleasure. For the time, and I love and your and story. Said, she's like one of my old, old friends. <laughs> My wife and my children. Another, another daughter. <laughs> and I told the whole story, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it's been fun. So, I just, I'm very, thank, thank you for doing this, and well, I love your memories. Well, if there's anybody else, I probably would say, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. Yeah.